Hello everyone and welcome to my presentation. My name is João Paulo Nogueira and I'm going to present to you the Domino's Persona 2021, how we remote research Latin America through the COVID-19 pandemic. This is our table of content. So I'm going to present the context, problems, personas, our methodology, interviews, analysis, validation and results. So about us, uh, this research was conducted by me and Viviane Mesquita. She is the lead product designer at Gazelles and I'm the senior product designer in the Domino's game. And about the company, uh, this picture was taken before the pandemic. Uh, Gazelles has over 70 collaborators and over 25 classic casual games in the portfolio. It's a Brazilian company established in Rio de Janeiro but we have Canadian, Canadian studios too, and we have been remotely working since March 20. Uh, and our mission is building fun through simplicity. Uh, about Domino's, uh, Domino's is, is based on the classic board game where you have to match the tiles with co corresponding pins, amount of pins, and it's again played by two or four players. Uh, in our Domino, Domino's game, we offer four different game modes and uh, we have uh, 1.3 million monthly active users and our business model is free with a VIP subscription for benefits. Before we started this research, we had uh, some data from different sources inside the company. So we knew our audience by marketing personas, by past surveys from the business intelligence team and some uh, remote playtests using the playtest cloud service. And about the COVID-19 Brazil, uh, the social, social isolation started on March 20 and the vaccination started only on January of this year. Uh, we had uh, a lot of problems with COVID here in Brazil. Uh, I have some numbers in this slide, but uh, the main pact was that we had to create a methodology to recruit and interview players remotely while our own team was remotely working. Uh, for instance, I'm, I'm living in Manaus in the north of Brazil and the rest of the team was in Rio de Janeiro. So we, we were far apart. So inside, uh, moving to a problem. Our problem was that uh, we had some data about players but we, the development team needed to understand behaviors and motivations to make better decisions for, for the next features. Uh, but we, we, the world was in a pandemic. We were limited to invite players to see play tests, to, to have, uh, to receive people at our, our company. And then uh, a starting point for everything was our matriz SD. Uh, I couldn't find any reference in English, but it's uh, certainties, assumptions and questions matrix. So we listed everything that the team know about the, knew about the game and the, the, the target, the audience and the market. Uh, uh, we listed our hypothesis, well, things that, we m that maybe we knew and uh, also the question things that we want to know, wanted to know. So after this, uh, our main questions were, who were our UX design personas? Uh, how could we remotely interview players and validate data within our player base? And how could we increase the revenue based on our UX design personas? The main goal, of course, was that the UX persona we, we had to design then. But the secondary goal was to understand players' behaviors and motivations when playing dominoes, deepen the understanding of data collection from analytics and design a research methodology that we could share with the other teams inside the company. Uh, right at the starting point for the research uh, in the um, immersion stage, uh, we also used some other personas report from other companies such as Tapjoy, New Zoo, Quantic Foundry for motivations uh, and also we collect some data inside Gazelles and the uh, game designers were using the Bortles player types. So uh, about basic, uh, basic knowledge about personas. Uh, when talking about personas, it's important to 
to say that it's a fictional profile, but it's someone that the team can look at this profile and make decisions based on realistic data, on on something that we, we it, it's a real behavior or motivation from the players. So most of the time that you see personas being used, they will fail. I uh, have a list of some reasons. So the first one is shallow profile. It's it doesn't have the, the depth needed for the decision making. Uh, it wasn't based on user data. Uh, it was created but not used by the team. So it stayed on the wall. Everyone could see it, but they uh, didn't take it, it into consideration. Uh, they are used, but they have no updates. So personas need to be updated from time to time. From time, to time. So in this case, they are not updated. So you, you make decisions on a snapshot of a profile in the past. No buying from leadership. This is the case of UX maturity in the company. Uh, the persona was not co-created, so it's important to to gather material from everywhere and from the players, discuss with the team. Uh, there were lack of instructions, so they were created. The team has all the material, but they don't know how to use personas to, to make decisions or to discuss. And the last one is there are types of personas. So, as I said, we had marketing personas, but the answers provided by these profiles, they were not the same that we were seeking uh, with a UX persona. So when creating uh, our personas, we, we considered information. Uh, we need to provide useful data and insights for decision making for all the team. Uh, segmentation, we need to, to find between these profiles that we are researching uh, niches or new opportunities and try to, to make recruiting easier up from this. And representation. Uh, Updates are created according to the market changes and research reports. People change. So next year, what may may happen that these these behaviors may change? Uh, for the past years, we had the pandemic, for example. Then uh, our after our immersion, the starting point was creating proto personas. Proto personas are lightweight form of ad hoc personas created with no new research. Basically, uh, you have uh, uh, the team to discuss uh, the most common profiles that are used in the game based on information that we already have. And these proto personas, uh, we need to validate them later. So for our proto personas, we created them from a mind map. Uh, we started from the same point, the will to play dominoes. Then we split according to the experience goal, uh, a relaxing activity or a competitive activity. So chill or thrill. Then we went down one level and split it again uh, based on secondary goals, according to what we already knew about them. So people wanted just to practice dominoes or they wanted to to have challenging matches and these goals were in the next layer and in the end we selected four endpoints based on different gameplay motivations so challenge strategy competition and the uh, community um, then we we had these four proto personas and all of them had name image demographics journey uh, experience goals motivators and behaviors it's important to say that the pictures that we used for these personas, they were generated by an AI-based uh, website that I'm explaining here. So uh, we, in this way, uh, they are free, so we, we avoid using real people pictures in the, in the research. Uh, about our methodology. We use design thinking in our daily basis uh, on all researchers and, and uh, features that we are developing the games. So this personal research, it was uh, focused on the first part, the understanding. So empathizing with the players and defining what we were going to do. 
And when analyzing everything that we already had, uh, we detected that we needed to reinforce the information with interviews and surveys, since we had already data from uh, remote playtesting, demographics, metrics, analytics, and star reviews, for example. Um, in this slide, I present to you every UX tool that, or framework that we used during all the research. So we had uh, the marketing personas, demographics, metrics, analytics, the CAQ matrix, uh, empathy maps, proto personas, surveys, interviews, player journeys, player segmentations, play tests, how my wish and lessons learned. So this is the, the, the graph that explain our research. We had sta six stages for it. And then we have these big moments where we uh, advance from one step, relevant step to the other one. So uh, as I said, we had a data Im immersion in the planning and recruitment stage. Then we would assess Brazilian players for these, uh, for, to identify these behaviors and uh, motivations. Then we would analyze this data and check with the player base, validate with the player base if uh, this is this is the same for, for everyone or not, you know, which behaviors or motivations would uh, be different. And then we would validate them and create our personas 2021. This was our schedule for the, the research. We started earlier in February and we finished in the, the beginning of May. Uh, it's important to, to say that uh, the researchers had to split time between the project and other activities. So we work with Agile, the, the sprints were, were going on, so we had to solve uh, these tasks and also research, uh, which means that we could have shortened this time if we were full-time dedicated to the research. The next step is, uh, is about the interviews. For them, we started with a recruitment survey. Uh, we created a survey to, in Google Forms for this interview. We used this survey to collect quantitative data while recruiting these Brazilian players. And uh, they received this survey via the survey link via push notification sent by our community team. Uh, some recruitment numbers. Uh, the push notification was sent to over 1 million players. From all these, these uh, a little more than 5,000 opened the push notification and we had uh, 608 ones answered surveys. So we we checked our uh, goal for number of, of uh, surveys. And going on, we had the opt-in for the interviews, we had a recruitment, we had interviews scheduled, and in the end we had the players that were really interviewed for uh, qualitative data. So we had a goal to, uh, we had numbers to, to make the quantitative study and the qualitative study. Based on the, the answers from the survey, uh, we created this recruitment uh, survey answers spreadsheet where we used the uh, parameters and values to funnel the profiles that we uh, would use to validate the proto personas. So we created four main filters for this. Uh, and these parameters were saved in the in, uh, in Google Sheets. So whenever we needed to select more players for recruitment, uh, we would pick these filters or broad them. So uh, it's important to say here that we selected uh, the, the profiles that had more in common with the, the proto personas so we could see if we can validate the data or not. In the end, we had to, to broad the, the selection filters because uh, it's hard to recruit as you saw. Uh, contacting players. Uh, Agazil's representative contacted selected players by phone call and presented the company, the research, the way we collect the, the person's contact because they asked, oh, how, how you got my, my phone number? And we had to remind them. And uh, then we asked if we could schedule an interview. So these three people, Carolina Araújo, Rodrigo Caldas, Paulo Sabino, they helped a lot. And we would like to publicly say thank to them. About the WhatsApp schedule, uh, 
we asked in the survey which messenger uh, people uh, would like to, to talk to us that we would use or or they their preference whatsapp is very common in brazil very popular so it was the the highest choice for everyone uh, then we scripted our message according to the replies and outputs and uh, in order to facilitate this communication so uh, for instance we if they had a specific question it's such kind of uh, FAQ so we would do, use that uh, answer copy and paste in the WhatsApp for the interview script we created this Google Docs file where we had big uh, question groups based on profile game experience monetization tournaments and social aspects of the game and we created 65 total questions, uh, a lot of them. Uh, but when testing the interviews internally, we noticed that we could reduce them to 24 after uh, uh, refinement. So yeah, it, it was way shorter than the, the first one. But in the end, this script for the interview, it was used more as a reminder than a guide for us. So in the, the heat of the, the interview, we'd let people talk and we would check this script and say, ah, okay, we forgot to, to ask about monetization. And then we start the, some questions or conversation about it. Also, before each interview, we had a short meeting with team members uh, and we would uh, discuss w which were the hot topics for that specific profile. So we would see the recruitment survey answers so for instance, uh, which game mode they, they play most or what is their position about uh, people abandoning the game, leaving the game. And uh, then based on this, we would, ah, okay, we need to explore further this information. And then we add that to our briefing uh, template. For the interviews, uh, 30 to five minutes before the interview, we contacted them again as a reminder. Uh, and in the schedule time, we called them via a WhatsApp video call, unless they stated that they wanted a regular WhatsApp audio call. So, uh, and also we explained that we were going to record everything, uh, but uh, it, half of the people more or less uh, used the WhatsApp video call and the other half used the uh, audio call. Uh, each interview had an average time of 30 minutes uh, <clears throat> uh, in the, our setup, we recorded the audio using a notebook running a, out, an audio recording program, a microphone, and a smartphone on a stand, and a connected to a charger to avoid uh, running out of battery. So this setup was most basically the one I'm using to, to record this session, but I had the phone here and would talk to the person in the, the, in the call while watching the, the while reading the script and talk to people on Discord. Uh, team members, as I said, team members were connected to this Discord channel, uh, mirror room in which the audio from the call was shared. So if they needed me to ask in depth information about a, a behavior or motivation, I would read on the Discord and then ask in the interview. Uh, after the, each interview, uh, yeah, during during the interview, they would take notes and suggest more exploration, some topics, as I said. But after the interview, we would gather in the in the Discord channel and discuss all relevant information and impressions and details about what they said. Sometimes players shared about rules and di that differs from our game. So we would prepare a br the briefing document based on all this information. Uh, rewards are, are important, an important part of research like this. So we couldn't offer a monetary reward for players, but we offered VIP codes that they would use to, to gain one month of sub VIP subscription. Uh, this is a huge improvement point for our research that will evolve, can and will evolve with the company UX Maturity. Uh, because there was a situation where 
we interviewed VIP players that couldn't we use this VIP code because they were already VIP players. Now I'm going to talk a, a little about analysis. Uh, after collecting all the, the briefing documents from all interviews, uh, we prepared the, these validation points, the proto-personas, experience goals, motivators and behaviors. We review all audios and the briefing notes, collected player quotes from this content, uh, extracted all the player needs that they verbally uh, expressed to us, collected the, all the declared behaviors when playing the game or preparing to play, or, they, or from their journey. Uh, we prepared insights based on this data, uh, segmented the, the users, and created the personas. So uh, uh, this is the starting point for us to segment our, our, users, our users. We had uh, two axes. Uh, the first one, the horizontal, is related to uh, gameplay experience goal. So they want to a more casual session, place to chill, or a competitive session, place to thrill, as I, I explained earlier. And the vertical axis is related to the opponent behavior. So uh, they would, uh, would like to play against uh, someone who is has an instant gameplay. And this is uh, related to our bots, because they instantly play the game and uh, some players like and others don't like. So this is our vertical axis, artificial behavior and natural behavior. So more human. Uh, the player waits for some seconds before playing the tile and that's it. Then uh, we would position all the, the interviewed profiles in these axes related to the both axes. We, we create uh, values for each one and position in accord to these values. And as you can see, we had uh, each color was trying to validate a proto persona. Uh, they were spread uh, in, the, in the graph, so we had to watch where they would cluster. And we have two main clusters, one in the middle of the, the graphic and another one a little to the right in the competitive session. And kind of split between the both behaviors and an artificial and natural. Based on these clusters, we found these two personas. Uh, Team Costa is the first one, reflects our casual players with no preferred opponent. And Battle Battaglia reflects our skilled and competitive players who prefers humans, but also play bots. Our spontaneous persona, the Team Costa, as you can see, we created the journey based on all reports and how they would be the, the, the daily routine of the person. Uh, we add the player needs, things that they play for it. We add the desires, what they expect or dreams about the game. The frustrations, what's blocking, what blocks the, the, these needs. And the quotes that we call Some quotes, because this, this was just a card, but we had other in the documentation. And also in the bottom left of the, the card, you can see the segmentation where it's positioned. Then we have the Battle Battaglia, and you, the same information, just uh, with uh, data re related to this persona. Also, we estimated player routines based on what players told us for each persona. So, for instance, Spontaneous had a lot of smaller sessions during the day with a, a bigger session after the being at home with family and had, had had something to eat with everyone and before going to bed they had this bigger session the competitive player persona uh, had fewer sessions during the day and the most significant play session was at night after dinner and the uh, family activity so they would uh, really go to the game and play their, their the matches they wanted. We know that we have future exploration in this this graphic, uh, especially about the, the profiles that may be related to exclusive playing against bots, another one that exclusively play against people, and an, um, a more casual one that just want to relax while you're playing. 
but we yeah this is the for the next step next year then we had the validation uh, this is the the step of where we worked on that this is the moment that we collect got all the data from Brazilian players and now we wanted to see if the same behavior and motivations would uh, be valid for the other players in, in other countries in Latin America. So how would we do that? We selected by the, the language the game was being played. So we had three main languages, English, Portuguese from Brazil and Spanish. The, the validation service structure was, uh, we had closed and the answer about these hot topics, motivations, bots, players, abandoning the game and monetization social and we had also uh, open-ended answer question in, in, in the, the survey then we created our insights and then the takeaways uh, again about the data collection we recruited them via uh, an in-game opt-in according to the device language we inside the game we invited them to okay can we can you answer a survey that will help us to make a better a better game for you uh, we uh, the answers were, were collected in a google form survey and we th this survey was running and open for uh, the second week third week in, in may uh, we got 2,876 answers in, in Spanish, um, 1,735 answers in Brazilian Portuguese, and 1,005 answers in English. So uh, this ratio uh, is interesting because it matches how the game is distributed in Latin America. Uh, the v so about the v this validation, uh, from all the data that we collected during this research, we can say this, uh, people want flowing matches with quick turns against or with the same people, the same players from the beginning to end without interruptions, be them advertisement or technical issues, and while being able to express themselves without affecting the game flow. And we had more specific points. So uh, the close-ended answers helped us to differ cultural profiles inside our personas. So even though we had uh, Beto Battaglia and Chin Costa, uh, we know that, for instance, uh, we can, in the future, uh, use a, a competitive profile that is more towards not using the shot because people who play in English, they, they don't like the shot very much. So that's it. Uh, we were able to validate insights from the personal research and topics related to player times, communication, robots, advertisement, and scout the interest for f future features. Uh, we saw that players are vocal in different ways, and the open-ended answers collect uh, the answers collected corroborate information from our from other sources such as our community report, our past surveys, our playtests and other interviews. So uh, whenever they have, um, they, they have the possibility to say something about the game, they are, they, they are vocal about that. Uh, and in the end, we detected that we were at a saturation point when considering inputs from different methods. So we felt that, okay, this is the point that we should end the, uh, the personal research this year and go back to it next year. The close-ended answers analysis, we, we compared the answers from all three languages. We compared with data from other sources inside the company, like uh, BI data. Uh, the team discussion about profiles and cultural differences or the reasoning behind uh, the difference in the graphics. Uh, we documented these main differences between these profiles and shared information with other teams. For example, uh, the data that we collected in these questions, we shared with market team. So they were able to create specific campaigns to, uh, for instance, the people that were that were playing the game in Spanish. So a hot topic for them was uh, explored for mark for uh, in, in the market campaign. 
Also in the open-ended analysis, this is how we, we did it. We read and categorized all answers by their content. We prioritized uh, suggestions and critics due to their potential improvements to the game. We create subcategories for these suggestions and critics. So we could create filters for uh, a better analysis. Then we created a single sentence for each topic covering the general idea. We prioritized according to the number of related comments. Uh, from there, we had a, a team discussion session about the, the results. We related all the findings with game design documents or project uh, tasks. So they, they are directly connected to actions in the, in the project. And uh, in the end, we also had a, an analysis documentation with how might we use to, to help game design and project managers uh, with the uh, action points. Then what did we learn from it? Uh, that overall, Dominus is a praised game. People like it and uh, like to say that uh, it's special for them. It's uh, what they do in their relaxed time. So they, they have strong opinions about some points of the game, but they praise it. Um, Players have comments and suggestions about specific details, such as game rules, UI flows, emojis, and moderations. Uh, we learned that technical issues uh, were regarding crashes and freezes and interaction bugs, and problems with statistics, for instance, not registering some victories. victories uh, they, they can be analyzed deeply by the development team uh, from this data that we collected. Ads are a big frustration point for our players. Um, I think that's very common in all free-to-play uh, products. But ads are, are really a frustration point. And, but we had a, a, a subscription benefit that is removing ads. Uh, but we, we needed to, to deeply analyze and discuss how we can promote and improve our VIP subscription based on this, because it seems that player didn't match the, the, two, the two points that are uh, subscription or remove ads and they are suffering from, from this, these same ads in the gameplay session. So results. Uh, our main deliverables were the personas, Team Costa and Beto Battaglia. Uh, we were, were able to detect the difference based on language um, through Latin America. Uh, people playing the game in Spanish in Brazilian Portuguese and English. Uh, we created the insights and how might we and had a table relating these findings and action points for the team. And also we created these lesson learned 12 lessons that we shared with other teams. <coughs> for insights, we use the formula. It's a, we get a, a player need, we add a, a barrier or difficulty for it and then we add a, a player quote. So this is the, the insight that we used and we created how might we based on, on this insight. So we could have uh, discussion points. And in the last part, the team evaluated uh, which Domino's key results were affected by solving that problem. And then we assigned a Jira task or game design page document in Confluence to it. So for example, a uh, player need would be uh, a complete match without players leaving the game. The barrier is uh, players leave matches and are replaced by bots. And the player quote was, uh, when someone leaves the game it, and is replaced by a bot, I leave the game too. How might we make quitting less impactful for the players who are left in the match? And the, uh, solving this would affect our retention and uh, our, we, we are trying to motivate players to stay online. And uh, the action point was registered on a uh, game design document or a Jira task. Okay. Uh, so we, we were able to have difference based on languages. Uh, players in all languages, they consider the domains a relaxed activity. They prefer to play bots or people, depending on the context they are in at the moment. They like playing other people because they are unpredictable. Uh, they say playing with other people is challenging for this reason. Uh, they think quitters should be punished. Um, it's a disruptive behavior. Uh, 
They like to see the number of fixtures and they don't care about subscription because they don't, uh, they don't, they can't say which are the benefits, like removing ads. And the difference is based on languages. I have them on this slide, but the most important part is that knowing this difference was very relevant for our, for instance, our market team too, because they could, as I gave the example, uh, orient the campaigns to each of, of, of uh, this audience. <clears throat> um, what, I, what else I can say about this slide is that uh, Portuguese, Brazilian Portuguese players, they have a behavior similar to this, the Spanish ones, the Spanish speaker ones, uh, such as they are friendly in shot, uh, they, winning is important, but competition, the result is as well. Uh, it's a pastime and the, they, they are more similar. The English speakers, uh, Winning also is a goal, but they are very competitive. Uh, Dominus is considered a serious hobby, not only a pastime, and uh, they don't want to use the shot. And uh, yeah, and then now we have the lessons learned. <clears throat> For this document, we took notes during all the personal research. So every time that we had something learned, we would write it down. Uh, then we had a retrospective discussion team based on what went well, what went wrong, what needs to be improved for these lessons. And in the end, we had 12 major lessons learned. So about the, the lessons learned, we the first one is about briefing. Uh, the team putting effort to prospect hot topics for that specific person that's going to be interviewed. The inter about the interview itself, uh, understanding gameplay vocabulary in different regions because we are going to be challenged by the players. They are going to use uh, specific terms, uh, so whoever is interviewing needs to, to know the game and need to know this vocabulary so they can uh, really uh, have, a, have a trade with the, the, the interviewed person. Uh, the third one, prioritization. Uh, results came really fast after we, the research was prioritized inside the, the, the team. Uh, about recruitment, we reached players that wanted to talk to us, but we know that there are others and how we are going to reach them in, uh, in this pandemic context or this remote uh, remote, remote work context. So this is something that we are going to discuss for the next year. Uh, timing. The longer it, it takes from recruitment to interview, more problems appears. We saw that uh, the last interviews, the scheduled interviews that we had, uh, people had a, a, right, a high uh, absence rate and couldn't uh, say yes to us. So they, oh no, I, I cannot be interviewed today, ah, can we schedule another time? Mm, not really. So uh, we had a, a high success rate where with dates close to the recruitment result. Uh, about teamwork, shared burden, different views, richer discussions. Discussion. So uh, this is the, the co-creation part of, of the, the process. And the, it's the, uh, when we, you, when you have different perspectives, it's going to make the results better. The excitement. When interviewing players, uh, we had to change our script based on the player excitement. So they wanted to discuss a very specific point and we wanted to talk about profile. Uh, we saw that, okay, we can talk about profile later. Let's just hear the, this person excited talking about the game that they love. So we just changed the order of, of question groups. Uh, the briefing part one, we detected that we would use an empathy map as a, a good debriefing tool and we are going to test that in the future. The briefing part two, discussion goal is to fill a template table with key points. So uh, it's a kind of a system that we ended up using in the game or in the research. So uh, it, it made it faster too. So we, we knew which information needed to be there when discussing about the debriefing. 
the next point is UX maturity. We need to select which battles are worth fighting. When you are in a company that you want to to help to, to rise the UX maturity level. So for instance, the rewards, we gave VIP codes, but online shop vouchers are good in these times of pandemics. Uh, this is something that we may negotiate with the, the organization in the future. So yeah, each battle, uh, we, you need to select the battles you're, you're fighting. Uh, and the last point was the, the peaks. We tried to assess gameplay emotion peaks during the, the interview, but we failed, of course, because the best way to, to get this this emotion peaks is in another uh, in another approach. So watching a, a play test would be the perfect one. So we we just learned that okay, we can't, we can't. Let let's stick to another thing. Uh, do you remember that uh, matrix that I mentioned with assumptions? So. Uh, the first one, 80% of the base preferred single player mode after playing all game modes. Not really. Uh, our main menu is biased in single player preference. We detected that peop new players would just tap the first button in the menu, but this is something that we needed to investigate further because we, in this, this, in this moment of the research, we had a, a, a Navy testing running. So, now we have them, the, the result is that uh, no, the, it, it was not biasing. Uh, players don't play certain multiplayer modes because it's impossible to find op opponents online. Not really. Uh, the situation in this case, uh, they could find matches. They, they, they were not interested in these multiplayer modes. Uh, players play offline to avoid ads, making VIP less worthy. Uh, no, uh, we tried to to get this information in many different ways, but players don't really play offline to avoid avoid ads. So we need to check how how the the bridge between this data from our um, analytics and the, the behavior. It's something that for for the future for us. And uh, player uh, don't play play with friends because they don't have friends who plays dominoes out of the game. Yeah, we detected this. They say that, okay, I wanted to play with my friends, I tried to invite them, and we noticed that the main issue is with the play with friends gameplay flow. Uh, it has a lot of friction, so we will improve that in the future. F future. Uh, and about the questions, we were able to, to answer who are our personas, uh, Battle Battalion Team Costa, uh, what kind of game mode our players prefer, uh, yeah, this is something curious because it's based on, on region. So, for instance, in the the west of Brazil, they would rather play on a specific rule set. In the for the Spanish players, they would uh, they even uh, like to play uh, in a different orientation in the board. So we got some nice data from this question. Uh, how many of our players would like to gamble? Yeah, we were checking for f future features and uh, some of them replied about some questions about the gamble that it's something that we are planning uh, of course in the legal ways inside the game and uh, why do players play offline yeah as I said we need to investigate this further because uh, we have data that is saying to us that they are uh, escaping some ads but we couldn't detect how they are doing that or maybe this is a behavior that is related to the people that d didn't engage with the, the survey or the interviews. And the last one, uh, why is multiplayer gaming only 20% of the player base? We, what we really detected uh, was that uh, it's a mix. People play the, the opponent depending on the, the current context. For instance, they're playing outside home, they, they house the just want to a quick match or they are relaxed at home they want to play against other players so this is something that we also can investigate further and uh, in understand the reason of this this value uh, I mentioned this a lot of times but I uh, want to make it even more important team discussion is really really 
uh, present in, in all the, the stages. We had discussion sessions based on content presented in every result meeting. Uh, this way we align everyone with the deliverables, they analyze data from different perspective. Uh, we could evaluate impact based on, on these areas too and decided action points. So the most relevant point, points were knowing our personas and their journeys, pain points, creating a connection between most impactful issues, bots, timers, and people abandoning the game, and our release plan for the game, uh, and understanding the difference between player profiles based on language for our personal research in the next year. So uh, yeah, the, the team, uh, were able, the team was able to see a high value, value in all these relevant points. So, uh, in the closing takeaways, I would like to say that personal research is a continuous task. Uh, our research will continue, continue yearly. Uh, and uh, this is something that is important. As you saw, uh, there are some points that we may investigate further in the next year. We are living in a new world after COVID-19 and some behaviors change really fast. So it's really important, or important to watch trends and understand behaviors to reach players accordingly. We are going to test new approaches in the future and small wins build the path to a better UX maturity. So the results from this persona and relating them to action points inside our game development and Having these on the release plans and the roadmap, uh, we can measure results and then, like I said, select uh, harder battles and not not really battle because it's a, uh, everyone is the same boat as the company. So we can help to raise the UX maturity in, inside the company, showing these results. And that's it. I would like to thank you to the to everyone that watched to the organization and uh, for technical issues uh, I was the one presenting this, this this work for you but Viviane Mesquita was all the time uh, working with me in the presentation the discussion so here is our information feel free to contact us anytime and that's it bye bye all this is possible thanks to our sponsors Playtest Cloud Player Research Balsamic, Adobe, the book How to Be a Games User Researcher, UX is Fine, Antidote, and Sketch.